watched. I'll let you start because I'm not good at starting. <laughs> you were so close. <laughs> I don't remember what it's called. Okay. Um, so <laughs> this week we watched uh, the 24 Faces of Billy Milligan on Netflix. Uh, this was a Lindsay pick, very good, but full disclosure to you, I told you that I was going to finish the last episode and I fell asleep about halfway through <laughs> and I woke up exactly at 6.05 when I told you I would because it was doing the credits. So I am not entirely certain how this ends. So I'm going to do my best. I was out until the ungodly hours of the morning. And then I woke up early because my body hates me and I have been just so this this was a very interesting pick um so essentially you have billy milligan who um raped nine women i think and uh i think assaulted like four and robbed four or something like that just like a bunch of crimes um but his defense is that he is a um a person with multiple personalities and this was back in the time that this was like just coming out so people didn't like believe it trust it they still don't <laughs> there's like a whole thing about like did he actually have these was it fake like just a very interesting concept i and think that it wasn't fake but that he exaggerated it to ensure he wouldn't be in prison if that makes sense yeah um because you know at one point he had the arab inmate um transcribe a letter for him in arabic um to be able to say that it was from one of his personalities but all the trauma that he went through and everything i really feel like it started out that yeah he's got these multiple personalities um but the, then he saw that he might be able to get away with his crimes, but if they don't believe him, then he won't. So he had to exaggerate the severity of those personalities um, in order to continue it on. Like, you know, because once he started getting therapy and was doing better, but then was put back in, you know, was in prison. <clears throat> um, I think that he feared that if he was okay, they may try to say, okay, he's not crazy, but he did these crimes. You know what I mean? Like that yeah. kind of thing. So he was like, I've got to keep going with this because, um, you know, whenever I'm yeah. not getting the therapy that I need and I'm stuck in prison and not where I want to be, I've got to make sure that this is bothering me. So they'll put me back where, you know, where I'm not in normal gym population prison. Um, yeah, his like, I don't know. I like, I know multiple personality like goes from trauma. And I just did not, I was so surprised somehow when they said that that's what caused it. Like in the first episode, they're kind of just talking about him and going through his life story. And then at the end of it, they're like, and then it happened and we didn't know anything. And it was so horrible. And we don't And I was like, what, what happened to him? And then like the next episode, they're like, he was severely abused. And he like, it was like very traumatic and nobody knew. And like, he was you know threatened to be killed. And and I was like, oh, right. And I was like, yeah, that's how this happens. It's not just like, a, you know, a person just wakes up and has it. It's because of your like fractured psyche that can't handle whatever happened to you. Um, and that, that whole story was crazy too, because his stepfather, who was the one that abused him, like to this day still says, no, I didn't. Like, I don't believe that. Because yeah. the one friend, you know, had like came up and didn't catch the stepdad in the act, but um, saw He's the like tied up in a barn. Yeah, like some bad shit. And then like he got buried um, with a yeah. tube over him so that his stepdad could piss on his face. Like, he was yeah. this is as he's a kid. Like, this is some crazy next level torture. Like, that's fucking disgusting. And aside from the torture aspect it's just disgusting like to yeah talk um it's just really bad like things you don't you don't do to humans period but especially not innocent child like i don't care what a little kid does there's nothing that they do to warrant torturing them because yeah still like they don't even understand fully understand the 
consequences of their actions. So even if they do something bad, it doesn't justify torturing them. Like, I don't know. Like, I can't even imagine a world where a kid does something bad and you're like, I'm going to bury you alive as a punishment. Like, right. whose mind just goes to that? And I was reading, um, there's a really good book called If You Tell by um, Greg Olson. And it's, there's um, a retelling of um, a case out of Colorado, I think, or no, Oregon or Washington, somewhere up there. Um, But it's essentially this woman who um, abused her daughters and then she abused her nephew. And then she brought in two like loners that she met and then she abused them and ended up killing them was a very famous case but it was like her daughters like recounted their lives growing up and like the abuse that they did and they're like we would um you know we would look at her we would talk to each other and she didn't like that and then she would make us go stand outside without clothes on in the middle of washington winter and um just stand there for hours and we weren't allowed to come in and sometimes she'd spray us with the hose and you're like who just like, who thinks of that for children? Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, like something like that, I fully believe he, his like brain probably fractured a little bit. Um, yeah, definitely. And like the way that they interviewed everyone in this was very interesting. Um, <laughs> it was hilarious. They had one like in like a bank. Yeah, thing like where you like the safe in a bank where they keep money and stuff. It was like this huge safe and he's just sitting there being interviewed and then one like in a cell block where they're like in the hall in front of some empty cells and it's like Yeah, it's just a very narrow hallway and they're not very like far a big away from that. Not like a big like, like prison looking place, just like this tiny little and then oh, and then the guy who's in like the diner and he's yeah. like this tiny, but the stools are like bigger than him beside him. So it's almost like he was like cropped into this scene and the scene does he doesn't fit the scene. He's too little. So it's like he's like a miniature human sitting in this big diner yeah. and it's hilarious. Like they're like easily the best part of this was watching these interview locations. And I was shocked over it. Like they're interviewing them. They're putting the clips from like the same thing. So it's like, I know this person's in the diner. I know this person's in a cell. I know this person's in a weird crack house room, but it's still shocking to me every time. Like was a normal, like hotel room, not good enough. Like you look at it and you're like, this isn't terrifying enough. I'm going to make this person super uncomfortable. And I'm going to sit 20 feet back from them with my camera and do this interview. (laughs) It was funny. Um, it definitely put a humorous light on the show because the show is very morbid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, very dark show. But going back to his abuse, uh, there was one instance where the cops got called because he was beat. The stepdad was beating the mother, um, hmm. and the cops are basically just like, "Well, if she wouldn't misbehave, she wouldn't get beat." Instead of doing something about it and removing the guy and arresting him and. Uh, like before it escalated to the point that it did where Billy was abused the way that he was like, how could that have changed the outcome of everything? Like by removing that abuser from that situation where he wouldn't have been tortured. um, Cause this was pretty early on in the relationship. I believe if I remember correctly, Um, like maybe he wouldn't have raped all those people or, you know, done any of the things that he did um, and murdered them you know, and not ended up with all those multiple personalities and not had all these issues. And like, it could have saved lives just by, just by the long-term effects of doing something about the abuser. We talked about that in the, in the Gabby Petito episode where it's like, listen, even if they say they're fine and they like, don't want to press charges, like you should still arrest them. Like there's no reason to leave that because like they could be under duress. You don't know what's happening. Like yeah that's, they could have been threatened you know yeah or something yeah so it's like you can't just like be like well she's fine or like oh well that's just that's just woman stuff she should have listened like no arrest people that are doing bad things yeah so um the trial was interesting too just because it was the multiple personalities and they were saying that like they've only used the like nobody ever gets uh approved for the insanity defense and like and I kind of agree with that because like I feel like 
it's a cushier it's I mean it's not the right word because you're still like I feel like they eyes. may now more often but definitely not back then in the yeah. 70s or 80s 70s because that's what they were saying a lot for this they were like um we don't want to let people like let people think that if they just say that they're crazy, we'll not put them in jail. And it's like, okay, but like, what if they actually like need help? Yeah. You know, cause I don't like, I don't think that they have just like general therapy in jail for inmates. Like if you go to jail and it's like, you know, the rapists, the murderers, like those people, it's like, yes, they did bad things. They need to be punished, but also they need therapy. They need I don't therapy. care what they've done. If they've done something other than weed charges. Yeah. If they've done anything that harms another human being, they need therapy. Yeah. There's nothing more to it than that. They need therapy because anyone who can consciously harm someone else needs therapy. There's something not right. You know, um, it's not in your human nature to want to harm other humans. You know, like we don't eat other humans. We don't, you know, so I mean, there's no like natural urges to harm another human in a healthy, normal yeah. person. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, because there's, there's just no reason to. So anyone who does that needs therapy. Yeah. So I was like, I really like that should be a focus. And I don't think it is because like, unless you get, um, you know, like, okay, you, uh, you know, you, you do need therapy. They'll put you in an institution, but the second that you're better, I'm pretty sure they just transfer you to the regular prison. They're like, all right, we've de dealt with your issues. So like go into the regular prison, but like the regular prison to me, it just sticks out as like, go stand in the corner until I tell you like you can come out. And it's like, right. we're never going to talk about what you did and why it's wrong. So you like, you don't know, like, and I mean, you, you can't use that to like excuse some of the stuff, but like, you know, you should talk about like why people have those motives to hurt other people and see if like talking about it, like helps them realize that they should change their ways. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think that that should just be like a normal custom in prisons. Yeah. That they have therapy at least once a week. They have therapy. Yeah. All and even, them. even a group like session, like, yeah. if, you know, you don't have enough therapists, like, which, which is funny that they're like, oh, there's, you know, there's an overabundance of therapists and no therapy jobs. Great. Put them in prisons. Right. Let them like deal with prisoners. Let them talk to them. Like we can figure this out. These for-profit prisons, get rid of the for-profit portion of it. Use yeah. that profit to get therapists. Yeah. Because nobody should be making pocket money off of imprisoning okay. other human beings. Yeah. Like that's criminal in itself to me. Then I remember the other episode, we talked about that one in, in uh, Arizona, I think, where it's like he was applauded for getting his meals down to like 11 cents per meal and it's like yeah. can you imagine people applauding you feeding somebody a meal for 11 cents like what does that even right. look like so yeah I didn't like that um but what really bothered me is he was in this institution and they let him out and like even if it was his other personalities committing these crimes even if they did successfully fuse all the personalities he still committed these crimes he is still somebody with multiple personality disorder these things ha could like his personalities could come back based on stress yeah like ptsd is real which he obviously had and what if something happens and triggers one of those personalities to yeah snap over you know and so they just like crimes again let him out and i was like i really thought i was like I, you know i fully supported him being sent to the institution i thought he was going to be institutionalized for life because yeah. had he gone to prison it would have been a prison sentence for life and he wouldn't have been let out no he was like, in this, like the 80s yeah and so like in the you know in the institution they're like well his personalities are fused together so he's no longer a danger to others so we're just gonna let him be free in the world and you're like but he still committed these crimes and needs to be like monitored and he should still be serving out the full sentence. Like, yeah, but you know, in the facility that's going to help him with it. Like, I thought that well, was like, and if he has worked through those issues, then maybe he could be someone to help other people with those issues. Yeah. You know, like, look what happened to me because I wasn't getting the treatment that I needed for this. Um, you know, let's work on your issues so that you don't end up in the same boat that I was in. <laughs> 
Yeah. yeah. I don't know how much I trust though. Like I know it's a approved ther- like ther- therapy for it, but like, I don't know how I, how much I trust the fusing of personalities. Like it just, it seems weird that you're just like, Hey, I want this personality and this personality to now be one. And we're going to get you down to only one personality. And, um, I and then personally, one. I don't think it's so much fusing. I don't, I mean, maybe that's textbook. I'm not, I was going to say that's the textbook so, term they were using, but I think it's just that you've worked through those traumas. And so those other sides of yourself are no longer needed. Yeah. Well, they so call, they call it, yeah. So they were, they were calling it fusing. So they're just like, okay, you combine with this personality. So now instead of being two separates, you're one separate until all of them are down to just Billy. Yeah. So, but I just, it's such a weird like concept of like fusing your personalities together. And I remember one part where one of the personalities was like, I don't want to fuse with this one. We don't get along. And it's like, what do you even do? Yeah. He was like, oh, it's because I don't like baseball. And he does. Like, I don't want to fuse with him because he, he likes baseball. And you're like, okay. But uh, in the long term, he ended up released. He ended up living in a trailer that I think his sister got for him. Um, he bought a farm did, at one point, too. Yeah, yeah. And did, like, artwork. And he was making money. <clears throat> yeah. Like, and um that actually forced a change in congress which i liked um because when he was in the institution which i don't like that therapist that came in and was like i'm gonna write a book on you and then all of a sudden his like i'm sure that he did have the other personalities but they're like oh he's totally fixed he's totally good and then this dude comes in and he's like he has 14 more personalities and we're making a book and then we're going to make a movie and he's going to make millions and we're going to let him out so he can go and like be on TV shows. And you're like, he needs therapy. He's not a sideshow. Right. Um, but I don't trust that guy. <clears throat> no, definitely not. Um, but he ended up just dying of cancer. Oh, did I think he? Just a couple of years ago. Oh yeah. He, um, he was only like 50 something. I think when he died. His, like, the back half of that was so weird because, like, yeah, the change in Congress was because um, they were, like, he was, Billy was supposed to get, like, a cut of all of the profits, and they're, like, no, like, he shouldn't be profiting off of his crime, so they're, like, all yeah. of his profits go to the state now, which is a good way to do it because it's, like, yeah, nobody should be profiting off their crimes because right. that's just going to make it or worse. Or if, really, I don't even think it should go to the state. I think it should go to his victims, their families. Yeah. That would have been, that would have been great. Like, if you're going to be making money off the fact my daughter was raped and killed. Like, yeah. Oh, fuck. First off, fuck no. But second, yeah. if somehow that happens, my family better fucking get it. Like, if she had a child, that child better get it, you know. Yeah. Not the. Yeah, that like, would actually be, that would be a great not system. Not like, Yeah. But yeah, that's yeah, like, like all of like, the, because, you know, all of, like, Netflix doing all these different, you know, a lot of the streaming channels are doing all these different documentaries and shows and you know they're making a ton of money off of them yeah um all those proceeds should be going to their victims families the victims families and if it's and if there's no like next of kin a victims like relief fund or something yeah. like because i'm yeah. sure that i'm sure that most of them aren't like because if they don't um, make the money they're not going to make the documentaries yeah but then nobody's making money off of their those victims so yeah, which is good so too. Get, so it's like, yeah. and then we won't have anything to talk about. Yeah. Then, then we just get to watch fun things like when Tiger King two releases in a couple. Right. Weeks. <laughs> oh, but I guess that's, I can't wait for that. That's true crime too. Just yep. kidding. <laughs> can't watch it. Um. So yeah, it's so all he, fiction. <laughs> so he, um, you know, he was getting released. He was getting to go about his life. He got married. And they just like allowed him to get married, but it didn't, it didn't last long. He only was married for 51 days and then she like left, but then she got a cut of the proceeds from the books. And you were like, why, why did this woman that married him for 51 days get a proceed cut of the proceeds? That makes no sense. I don't care if they were married. Um, and then he like, just, they fully released him or something. And they were just like, and he was young too. Like when they like, just let him yeah, go. So out he was 50 something whenever he died and he died, I think in 2018. 
Yeah. And he was released in like 1988 and he was only 50 something when he died. So he was still oh, so he really was only young. incarcerated for like seven to 10 years. Yeah. God. Um, yeah. So like that was, um, yeah, he, I remember he was young and they like were showing him and he was like, you know, talking to other people. He like disappeared. He like had a whole new identity. Like, um, he had friends that like didn't care that he was this person and like he would go and like <clears throat> see his brother and he was leaving the state and he was leaving the country and nobody like noticed and you're like he is a violent offender who could offend again at any moment because especially considering that let's say his 10 personalities fused together he was just billy and then they discovered 14 more and they right. they called those 14 the undesirables because the undesirables were extremely like violent and like stuff like that so it's like okay so he had these personalities that were you know violent on their own and then you find out that there's 14 more that are more violent that the other ones were keeping at bay but we still let him go just assuming that he's fully fixed and that he, no more personalities will jump out and even his, um, his one friend, he said that they went on a hike and they went to this like really remote like area. And he's like, one point he goes, he said something to me and he's like, I got chills and I got really nervous. And I became very aware of how like alone and isolated in this area we were. Yeah. Um, and he's like, I don't know if he switched personalities and I subconsciously picked up on it, or I don't know if, um, if he, uh, you know, he was fine, but it was just, it made me uncomfortable. I was like, see, like it could happen. Any stress could trigger new personalities and we have no idea what kind of personalities they would be. And we just mm -hmm. let him go. Yeah. So yeah, this is a really away. good show. Yeah. It was a really good show. Yeah. He ran away and he ended up murdering a neighbor after like stealing a bunch of his money. Mm -hmm. And that's when I fell asleep when they were like trying <laughs> to find him and convict him. And it's um, not because the show was bad that she fell asleep. She partied all night last night. So late. And then I woke up early and then I couldn't fall back asleep. And then I I, I had to finish watching this. And I like, I can't do it. She's been super busy. She's been so, so busy. I'm surprised she's even been able to make time to do this at all. <laughs> right, at least right now. I mean, she's bought a new place and picked out paint <laughs> so, so yeah so it was a very good show definitely worth the watch um anybody that watches it please feel free to inform me how it ends because I will not rewatch <laughs> that 30 minutes um yeah very interesting um for the multiple personalities for our legal system for like just the is it real is it not real kind of aspect like yeah because I don't you still don't hear about very many multiple personality disorders which um, which for a long time I thought was the same as schizophrenia, but I don't think it is because I think schizophrenia is just voices, not personalities. Yeah. Yeah. So. I have some personal experiences with multiple personalities, but I'm not going to go into this. Okay. Yeah. Good show. Definitely watch it. Let us know what you think about it. Yeah. It was really good. I really liked it. <laughs> All right. Bye everyone. Bye. I want to do a man named Billy Milligan. He had 24 faces on his. <laughs> I just saw your message. Yeah. I went ahead and reacted, even though you got to see me react in real time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what you have to say. It's my phone telling me that I need to turn the oh. volume down. I was like, your tagline in life. I don't care what you have to say. Yeah.